Hello everybody, Treno here, and today we are going to take a look at the 39M Charber Armoured Car, which is of course the first vehicle on the Hungarian subtree. So as you can see, it's going to be a 1.3 vehicle in rank 1, and like I say, it is an armoured car. So it's got the 20mm, well it's a Solifern cannon, I believe it is called the Nehez Puska, I can never remember if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, basically it's an anti-tank rifle. So it's got a five box magazine and you've got a 1.9 3.5 zoom when using it. And if we look at the ammunition itself, the way it was worded in the dev blog, I thought it was armor piercing and high explosive shells. Um, it turns out it's just APHE as a whole. And it has decent penetration, 25 millimeters at 500 meters, which against the more heavily armored vehicles is going to be a problem. But against most vehicles, you should be able to penetrate it at least. Of course, you are only firing 20 millimeter rounds and they only have a TNT equivalent of 1.7 grams. So you're not going to be getting that much damage. You're going to have to be aiming very specifically against the points in the vehicle you want to damage, such as the crew, ammunition, various modules, etc, etc. And you do also have an 8mm machine gun in the coaxial position, which of course allows you to deal with unarmoured vehicles without wasting your 20mm rounds. And of course it's got a reload rate of 3.9 seconds, which isn't the worst thing in the world, but as you can see there, it is quite a slow fire rate, 60 rounds a minute. Now of course being an armoured car, it is not particularly well armoured. It's more well armoured than I thought it was. I thought the max armour was only around 10 or 9 millimetres. It seems it's going to be about 13 millimeters at the front and it's quite well sloped. Uh, the turret's a bit flat, but of course on the side bit here, it is a bit more sloped. Although it's not going to drastically help you. And even though the whole sides are sloped, it's only adding about two millimeters extra thickness. From the rear, you do get a bit more effectiveness from the sloped armor, but there are plenty of flat spots to hit as well. But it's like I say, it's more well armored than I thought it was. Although this area doesn't seem to be um, modelled correctly, so I don't know if that means someone can just machine gun through there because it's not showing up. And moving on to the speed, it's got a top speed of 40 miles per hour, and it does that on an 84 horsepower engine. This is stock. I believe it's meant to be 90 horsepower once it's fully upgraded. And if we find the transmission, it can go forward and backwards at the same speed. So five gears forward, five gears backwards, which seems to be a bit of a theme with uh, Hungarian vehicles. They seem to be very good at doing max speed forward and backwards. And of course, we've got a crew of four. I thought it was a crew of three, but it's a driver at the front of the vehicle, commander and gunner in the turret, and then a machine gunner at the back. So you've got a very good crew complement here. You could definitely take a few losses and still be able to carry on fighting, which is very good. We we'll take this out for a very quick test drive just to see how it performs. So we're going to just quickly start off by testing the acceleration. And seems to be doing decently well, just under 20 miles per hour despite the muddy terrain. We'll test it out properly in a second. Take a few pot shots at the stack hound. It took us a few shots to actually get the gun out, and as you can see it doesn't really do much damage outside of that main area. Fire off our last two shots just to see what the reload rate is. So pretty quick, um, we just fire all five shots off in rapid succession, see how long it takes us to fire. So we can get all five shots off in pretty rapid succession. Again, it's not as good with a as with a 20mm auto cannon, but it seems to have done a decent enough job. Here's the driver's view, uh, which it seems pretty standard. Just going to see how long it takes us to get up to top speed, hopefully with minimal steering. So our top speed was about 40 miles per hour, as I recall. We're already up to 38, 39 and 40. Try the braking. Yes, so it seems to do pretty good in acceleration, pretty good at top speed and good at braking. Unfortunately, I suspect, yeah, the driver view as far as I can tell, it only seems to work forwards. Maybe there's a, maybe there's another button you can use to uh, change that. But I've never really had to use vehicles with uh, two driver positions, so I've never really uh, noticed that in the control configuration. 
I don't know if it's slightly slower accelerating backwards. I don't know. It feels like we got up to 40 miles per hour quicker when going forwards. Considering we, you know, started off with a slightly longer distance, but then I suppose we started at a decent speed once we crossed that river. But maybe it probably is about the same in acceleration. I'll just check out the horizontal turning. The turret seems to traverse pretty quickly. Maybe could be a bit faster. And it seems to turn decently enough for a wheeled vehicle. So yeah, Charba seems like a very good armoured car. Like I say, the weaponry could be a little bit more effective, but I think you can definitely have some good successes with it. So that is the 39M Charba. And yeah, this is a fairly effective armoured car, and I think it will be pretty good to play in War Thunder. Like I say, that anti-tank rifle could potentially be a bit of a weak spot, but it is kind of nice to have an anti-tank rifle armed vehicle. There's not too many of them. Ironically, I think the other one is in the Italian tech tree, the L333CC, which has the exact same uh, rate of fire. But yeah, I think the Charbo will be a very fun vehicle to play, and yeah, I'm looking forward to unlocking it on the regular servers. Anyway, just a quick video for today. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. I've been Toreno, and I'll see you next time.